She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies, and all its best is dark and bright. Meet in her aspect and Ada. Her yes? Uh, what? Ready? I'm ready. Are you ready to go? Because I am ready. What? You were talking too much. It makes the rest of us uncomfortable. Sorry. Is it the dress? I hate this dress. Or dresses as a concept. They are rationally cumbersome and weighty. What did I just say? Words. Too many. Sorry. Ada? Yes? What are you reading? Oh, nothing. Math. The new tutor suggested that I work on a geometric progression, but I'd rather focus on the factorization what of What are you reading? Daughter, we have so much against this author. I'm so sorry, Mother. I don't think you are. I think you enjoy this rebellion. I think it lights you up. I think it fuels you. I didn't mean to. I just found it. I didn't know it was his. Oh, this deception and defiance is at the core. No, Mother, please. Do you know how I come to know this? Mother, please. Because he is rooted in you. You cannot help that you are his daughter. No, I cannot. Which is why I likewise cannot help my curiosity about him. Mm, well, know that he left you. Like any harlot he was done with. Mother! Oh, darling, if that shocks you, I drop the curiosity where you stand. Your father poisoned every pond he passed. He left wreckage and desperation and depravity with his every step. And I defied him. I did for you. I know you think you're very modern, but darling, what I had to do for you, that was unheard of. Women do not leave their husbands, even when their husbands are philandering ne'er-do-well erotic obsessors. You said he left us. He did. To wander the world from bed to bed. And yet, if I had not acted in the way I did to protect you from him fully and completely, you would have been taken from me. Forced into your father's life. I fought for you in the courts, in the press. And what did he do? Oh, he died, sick and alone, mocked and sunk in the thought that no one loved him enough to save him from himself. Does that sound heroic, the genius romantic, and yet the world gives him power through obsession? He doesn't have any power, he's dead. That is power, dead a decade and still haunts us with rumors, vile and sticky, he is a constant downpour. He's gone, why shield me from him any longer? Not from him, from his nature in you. I know what they say about him. Good, it's all true. Darker the truer. They say he was great. Flawed, and yes, dark, but a great genius of our age. Do not idolize him. That's what we do with genius. I hope that there is some of that genius in me. I would rather be dark and genius than sunny and useless. You underestimate the vileness of his damage. Do not think that his darkness was part of his genius. It cut his genius short. And it will do the same to you if you do not brace against it. Words, mother. Just words. It's not an attack, it's only a poem. A poem you thought was about you? I'm sure. They all think his poems are about them. Don't be an idiot, darling. It's about some shivering bit of flesh and before you were born. I'm sure he abandoned her as soon as the lines were penned. Like you, paste your name in a few lines, call it love, and never be seen again. That was his general modus operandi. What lines? My name in his lines? Canto three. Oh, for show, of course. To lighten his image after he sailed away from you, never to return. Who would abandon a child they loved? Who would fill a young girl's life with rumor and scandal she cannot ever escape? Once you're married, and you cannot mess up your life any further, I'll answer any questions you have about him. But not before. It's hard enough to find a man of worth to marry a strange girl, but even more so with your very public lineage. He married him, not I. And when I see his instincts in yours, I cringe. I weep. I want the power to rip him from your fiber. But tonight, tonight, you will give them nothing to whisper except compliments for your grace, your beauty, your deference. Tonight, we prove our poise, don't we? Is this your debut or mine? None of that cheek, dear. That simply won't do. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Good. Nice cheek. Yes. Spoon. Tutor tells me that you have nearly completed the second book in your calculus series. Yes, he is competent, but not very interesting. Then let's try not to elope with this one, shall we? That was just once. And for you, the difference between zero and one is your entire world. No. We shall have no more discussions of maths nor tutors for the rest of the evening. I'm not allowed to discuss maths at the party? Absolutely not. But Mr. Babbage, 
He's the Associate Asian Chair of Mathematics. I know who he is. And Mrs. Summersville, she's written poems. And you were not there to discuss her poems. You are there to find a husband. But why have you tutored in math since I could talk and not let me talk about it? Because math's the opposite of passion was necessary to direct your focus to keep you uncorrupted. And despite your studies, he corrupted you. I will strike you again if you speak to me in that manner for one moment more. And perhaps this time I'll strike back. There he is, right there, under your skin. What must that feel like? Sickness itch? That's why they look at you, Ada. That's why they whisper. They wait to see if all is healed. Fall into beds, into depth, into depravity, which I have spared you thus far. And you will do well to swallow back any hint of his steam, or else you will be lost to it, and die as he did, alone and unloved. That is your future if you do not present yourself a lady, find yourself a husband with titles, and diminish your temper. Is thy face like thy mother's, my fair child? Ada, sole daughter of my house and heart, when last I saw thy young blue eyes, they smiled, and then we parted. Now it is now we part, but with a hope, awakening with a start.